All right. Wow. Can you believe this? Last week, we almost uh, did a show, uh, recorded the show on Friday. That's how late we did it on Thursday night. So uh, the complete opposite here, Thursday early. Uh, we're recording this at 9 o'clock. So obviously you guys know this because you're getting the videos earlier uh, this week. Uh, and who knows? I mean, uh, is, is this uh, possible with the Saratoga, if we do the Saratoga races? It's possible for us to do them in the morning? Up to Chad. He's training. He's Listen, every, He's every week is a different week. We still have another horse to train. So we'll... Uh... We're on the we're on the golf cart right now, touring Saratoga. Very nice, love it. Check this out. Uh, last week, uh, of course, we had some Saratoga races, and uh, what did you guys? Uh, first of all, uh, we had the Alfred G Vanderbilt and uh, Nakatomi passing Skelly late for the win. What did you think about Nakatomi's win, Chad? I think Chad Brown got his wish, and the track was uh, definitely favoring off the off the pace horses. Uh, look, it was the second. I was completely wrong. I didn't think he wanted to go six furlongs. He uh, he sat the right trip, came off the pace, and uh, and closed into it. You know, Skelly looks like he's he's not the same horse he was this winter. But you know, take nothing away from the performance of Nakatomi, and once again proving that there's no such thing as a Dubai bounce. And then uh, the Jim Dandy. Uh, this was the other race at Saratoga that we did. A great uh, race, actually. It turned out to be between Sierra Leone and Fierceness. Uh, so Sierra Leone, man, just a bridesmaid, huh? He does have three wins. He's not exactly a bridesmaid. He, he had three. He has three wins. Well, this year at least. Okay. I mean, look, I think all credit, all, all credit in this race goes to to Jackie John Velasquez. You know, the move that he made. First of all, sitting off what looked like at the time was going to be a a giant pace battle between five horses, which ended up being a, a walk in the park for Pony Express. Setting those early fractions in 47 and change, 11 and change, all by himself. Johnny was able to sit sit the perfect trip, lay second, and then uh, tilted out, tipped out wide. I mean, the, the the plan there was no bones about it. The plan was for Sierra Leone to make that move on the outside, and uh, Johnny made sure that wasn't a possibility. He came up, he, he made Flavian have to commit to the inside where it was a little bit of a a deeper part of the racetrack, and uh, Johnny was able to hold him off. He looked a lot like mine for him the week before in the Haskells. At the top of the stretch, he started to do uh, the cha-cha or whatever it was, but he straightened them out and uh, he got the job. The good news is for the Travers, guess what? He ran a two and a half. So guess who we're not playing? Guess who I'm not playing? He ran a two and a half? That's not right. Okay, it's not right. Okay. He so. ran a two and a half on the sheets? Yeah. Well, we're going to take advantage of that. Where's that going to be? What race? And the Travers. Travers. The Travers. Okay, cool. On again, off again, on again, off again, and with mind frame. My tickets at a short price. <laughs> with mind frame, with mind frame going to the sidelines for the rest of the year now with bone bruising, uh, he's going to have to step up and take the spot. The original plan was not to run him in the Travers, uh, but to wait for the Pennsylvania Derby, and and you know Rapoli wants. We just lost him. I'm actually surprised. He, he, we got him oh, back. Go ahead, Chad. Nope. The volume is not there. Hold on. All right. Anyway, by the way, yeah, uh, obviously, uh, uh, just looking at Sierra Leone, just keeping in mind that, yes, he's only been a bridesmaid for the last three races uh, since the Kentucky Derby. Um, but we'll see exactly what he does if he could finally uh, get it a uh, big win here right. since the Bluegrass win. Um, Doesn't look it, but by the way, so batting down um, the the push right from batting down on Sierra Leone. Do you think that was a big deal for Sierra Leone's momentum? No, Sierra Leone has no excuse. All right, so 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 just pushing Sierra Leone out of the way. That's that's okay. That's not gonna. You don't think that had any impact? I don't think he pushed him out of the way. If he would have pushed him out of the way, there's certainly – well, he – no, I don't think the match. Batten he down. Says, Hold on. I got to I gotta get you back on, Chad. You're on a different thing now. Hold, no one can hear you, I don't think. He said batten down was pushed out of the way. Pushed the arrow Leon Hold on because no one will hear you, I think. I, we got to put him back in here. And go ahead, keep talking. I guess John, you're the one that's to talk while I'm I don't doing think this. Pushed, I don't think that that 
interfered with him at all. Chad, uh, I guess you agree with John. The momentum that batting down pushed him didn't mean anything. No, I mean it didn't help. It didn't help, but that was all Johnny. Johnny set that up, and it, and it worked out. And I would say it's safe to say that Junior Alvarado won't be riding for Chad Brown anytime in the next six months. Oh, okay. There you Not go. That far from anyway. <laughs> I like it. Uh, and then the race at Del Mar, chosen Vron was awesome again, getting a win. Amazing. Just amazing. He's just a neat horse, like Chad says. He just shows up, never runs a bad race. And the good news is the Breeders' Cup is at uh, Del Mar, so he's just going to stay home and probably train right up into it. Jeff Hockman's uh, one of one of many owners. His uh, straight no chaser did not race. Okay, let's get to it. So uh, I believe Chad, we only have Chad for the Whitney. Uh, John and I will break down uh, race 10 at Saratoga. Uh, this is the Troy Stakes. Uh, we were kind of deciding between the 10th and the 7th as a, as the bonus race. Uh, we're going to start off here on YouTube. So uh, our YouTube viewers are, of course, going to be able to get our breakdown of the Whitney. And the morning line favorite in the Whitney is the three horse, and that is National Treasure. And really, if you look at this, uh, John, this is a really good wagering race. There are 12 horses, so it's a deep field. The favorite is only... Nine to five, which is not bad. Matter of fact, the second choice, I believe, is nine to two. So uh, there's some uh, there's some money to be made in this race. You could certainly be shopping around for a price. I'll tell you that much. National Treasures, no nine to five shot. You could certainly win, but at nine to five, no thanks. All right, look at this. I like the view that we get t this morning. Love it. Uh, all right, National Treasure. Let's talk about National Treasure then. Three sevens this year, John, and that's four sevens in a row. Uh, Pratt's on board. It's a Baffert horse. He is coming off a win in the Grade One Metropolitan at Saratoga. Uh, this is a mile and an eighth. That was a mile, but he's had sevens at a mile and an eighth before. What do you think about National Treasure? He's okay, but he's not worth nine to five. He's not that much. If he's not faster than other horses in the race that are a lot longer priced. Chad, um, I think he's the horse to beat, but I'm I'm not gonna take him here. I, he's fine. I don't I don't love how he trained this morning, but he's. He's fine. If if it's a sloppy track, I I, I would downgrade him. I think there's not going to be a sloppy track, but if it's a sloppy track, I wouldn't give him as much. He didn't seem very happy on the wet track this morning. Hmm. And what is the weather uh, looking like? I think it's going to be okay. Okay. Yeah, I mean he's he's been at some really big races lately and has lost to some really good horses. So while running those sevens. All right. Uh, let's uh, take a look at the rest of the field. Uh, the, the first couple of horses on the inside, John, are both long shots. Post Time and Disarm. Uh, Post Time ran a 7 in May, a 5 in February. So for the last uh, five, or, five, or eight, five or six races, he's been up and down. Uh, Disarm, meanwhile, uh, the best we've seen out of him are a couple of 8s late last year. He ran an 11 and a 12 this year. So Post Time looks like an interesting 20 to 1 shot, doesn't he? Yeah, but if, go back to Disarm for a minute. His best two races of his life were run last year at Saratoga. Yep. The problem is they were both on a wet track. So if the track comes up wet, obviously it moves him up. He's two for two. But again, his two best races last year were both run at Saratoga, and they were both eights. So not the worst idea in the world at a big price. I just I wish there was more of an excuse last time. I mean, I, I thought he was going to run a big race last time. And he, he to me... I mean, I was just kind of really, really disappointed with his effort. You know, he didn't didn't really show a heck of a lot. He runs back against many of the similar horses in the race on Saturday. I don't know. I just I want I want to pick him. I want to give him another chance. But man, that last race was disappointing. As far as post time is concerned, um, those numbers were were around one turn. This right. is his first time stretching out, and I don't I don't know. I mean. He finished second last time in the Met Mile because somebody had to finish second behind National Treasure. It wasn't like he earned second. He just kind of clunked up there. I mean, there was four of them that were kind of really close uh, together there at the end of the race, and White Barrio was a no-show. So, to to me, I just I, I I don't think that he wants to go a mile and an eighth, and so I'm going to play against him. You know? Would you would you prefer uh, the one or the two as a long shot? The two. The two. Absolutely the two. Okay. Me too. The one has no chance around two turns. Okay. I mean, I don't think. 
Not for me. Uh, the, another long shot is the four Warrior Johnny, a 20 to 1 shot. But Warrior Johnny sure looks like a good long shot to take. You got Gaffleone on board. Uh, just taking a look at the races this year, John, the sheet line is really excellent. 12, 7, 8, and 6. That's really good. We actually loved this horse the last time he, he ran. He was 9 to 1 that day. The interesting thing about this horse is he loves Saratoga. Two years ago, he ran a 7 at Saratoga. The trainer does really well here every summer. The horse is fine. He's 20 to 1. You must, must use this horse. This is, is like a is this, there any is there any concern of a bounce, though, John? Yes, the race is a little close. Obviously, I would have liked two more weeks, but uh, the price is what's going to dictate here. I mean, my, my only thing is, look, I, th I think Phil's a great trainer. I think the horse loves Saratoga. But when he has run in those bigger races, those stake races, um, he's he's come up short. You know, yeah. with, and so. Can I ask you, where is uh, Rosario? He gave this horse. He rides the arm. He rides this arm. Oh. He rides for Rasmussen. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was gonna so, say. This is like this is like a, a sheet horse, uh, and uh, and that's it. I mean, if you're a sheet, if you're a sheet guy, you're, you're you're interested in this horse. If you're not, you're probably not. But if you're a sheet guy, you'd also like a few more weeks. You would, but at least as you said, at least you're getting twenty to one. Correct. All right. First mission is the five, the nine to two shot, and his last three races are two eights and a six. He ran the six in the Grade Three win at uh, Oaklawn in March. Coming off the eight into Stephen Foster. A little bit disappointing considering he was the favorite of that race. He's never run at Saratoga. I think the horse has been a disappointment to the barn. I think they've liked him all along. Off of the sheets, he certainly has a shot. He ran an eight minus last time out. He has a six, three races back. Anyone that wanted to make a case for this horse, I can't argue with you. Look, I mean, he's, he's a conundrum, right? I mean, if he runs his race, th there's every chance that he's you know, the second best horse behind National Treasure, you know, it just, does he run his race? I, I got a feeling that he's going to run run better than he ran the Stephen Foster. I didn't think he was going to run well in the Stephen Foster. He, he, he just doesn't, doesn't maintain that form. But the fact of the matter that they elect to come here, I know obviously it's a stallion making race for Godolphin, but, you know, they weren't, they weren't committed to coming here until after the last breeze. So for his last breeze to, to be as good as it was gives them the confidence to come up here. Uh, I'm going to ride with them in this race for sure. Uh, Chance is that first mission is the favorite by post time. No, yeah. Na no, National Treasure will be the favorite for sure. National Treasure will be the overwhelming favorite. It'll probably be you know five to two, eight to five. Oh, huh? okay. All right. Uh, so we've got another couple. Uh, actually, three more long shots here in succession. The six, the seven, and the eight. Twenty to one shot. Uh, Il Maracolo uh, coming off three nines in a row. Krupi, uh coming off an eight. Uh, it's actually been 15, 10, 8 in the last three. That, and, and you got to read Ortiz Jr. on the last two and on this one as well. And Tumba Roomba, a 20 to 1 shot with Saez on board. Really, this horse uh, looks like another solid long shot, John. You've got six in December. This year, you have nine, another six, and two eights. Yeah, last time he was breaking from the rail at uh, Churchill Downs, that was around one turn. You know, he's, you got to use the, that's why this race is great. You got to be nuts to bet the favorite. I mean, sure, the favorite could win a national treasure, but you have a bunch of horses that are a point away. Horses like Il Maricolo never runs worse than a nine. Krupi's off an eight top. Tumbarumba could run an eight. All these horses could get in under on the, tr and you didn't even turn the page yet. Yeah. You got three long stockings. You got, I mean, this is a race of, this is a terrific race. And even if you pick one of the favorites and you, and you're, and you get one of the long shots to finish in second, you're still going to do yeah. okay. Absolutely correct. Chad? Um, Il Miracolo can't go in a straight line, so he's a toss for me. And I just hope that he doesn't get in the way of anybody else. Um, <laughs> Who was the, the one after that? Croupy. He's not good enough to be a grade one horse. And the third one is Tumba Rumba, who can't, go, who can't go a mile and an eighth. Now, if it was a tag team match and Tumba Rumba can run half the race, I would really like him. But I, I don't think he wants to go a mile and an eighth. The two, the two times he ran a mile and an eighth, he got beaten. I understand it was to a really nice horse in Touch Upon a Star, but he got beaten a Louisiana bred stake race and the Oklahoma Derby. So this is, this is grade one you know, at Saratoga, and he wasn't able to win those two. So, um, no question, his one turn races are better than his. Two. I just, I just, I don't think he wants to go that far. But look, I mean, the, he was purchased for the he was purchased out of his uh, start two back um, by Connect Saudi Connections 
to run in the well, actually by Qatar connections uh, to run in the Saudi Cup. So they got to find out if he can go a mile and eighth because that's that's his goal is to go a mile and eighth next year. So, I mean, it makes sense to try this race. Um, I just don't know that he's he's good enough. He did run a six in that race, at least the one that you talked about, that Louisiana Classic second place shot. Yeah. So at least you know, at least there's that, and there's twenty to one. Um, by the way, speaking of not going in a straight line, I know we didn't talk about it, but the two year old horse last week, that just is that that's a prime example of of a horse that just hasn't. I mean, it's his first race, right? One of his it was his first race that two year old we talked about last week. Oh, uh, yes. Remember, it looked like he was like completely like down the stretch. He looked like he, he couldn't like go a straight line. Um, yeah. What was the name of that? You, you said it right, John. That was a uh, noble confessor. Right. Yeah. So anyway. OK, uh, let's now move on and go to the nine bright future. Here's one of the top contenders based on the odds. He's a five to one shot. It's Pletcher Castellano, but he's only got an 11 this year. Last year, uh, he did end the season uh, with three single digits, but in the opposite direction. As a matter of fact, John, his last four races have gone in the opposite direction. Yeah, but they're not bad races. He does have a seven at Saratoga, but at five to one, I don't want this horse. Why would I play this horse at five to one? That's ridiculous. He is two for two at Saratoga. He has eight and a seven, so that's good. He won the Jockey Club Gold Cup, grade one race at Saratoga. Um, so there are good things, but he is five to one. What do you think about Bright Future, Chad? He's okay. He's okay. I mean, look, uh, he doesn't want to be inside. They kind of learned that when they ran him last time in the Monmouth Cup. But, I mean, it was good for Castellano to learn that, so now he knows in the race what's going to happen. Um, he needs to get the right trip and the right opportunity, but there's no denying his talent. The, when he got space and he was in the clear in Monmouth, I mean – that was a huge move he ran. The sheet number won't reflect it because he, he was inside, but I, I thought that was a very impressive race that he ran last time. So, Okay. Uh, next up is Skippy Longstocking. We've sure done a lot of his races. Uh, who's there with T's on board, 8-1 to one shot. He's coming off back-to-back -back sixes. That's really strong. And he's 8-1, to one, but of course he's on the outside. But still, I mean, this is one of the best horses in the field, John, and you're getting 8-1 to one at following back-to-back -back sixes he's really unbelievable i mean he never runs a bad race and horses like national treasure have never run a six you know he ran four sevens in a row whatever the heck it is i mean this horse is fast he's eight to one must use by the way chad i mean in, in the race that he ran a six at oakland park back in april he started in the 10th post position yeah, that yeah. was a different race. He was that's able to kind of dictate. Kind of right. Listen, he, he was he was close to the pace that day, and there's no way he'll be in front of National Treasure and the Whitney. Look, I'd say it's still 50-50, and this is just my own personal opinion. I haven't heard from anybody. Oh, no. I Don't think say he it. scratches. Oh, no. I think he scratches. Jeez. I think he waits for the Charlestown Classic. It's a million-dollar race. He'll be three to five. I don't think he runs in the race. I might be wrong. Maybe he runs. If he runs, I don't like him. I, I don't like how his last couple of breezes, he's breezing back to – to how he looked before the Pegasus when we didn't like him in the Pegasus and he was pulled up. Um, I think he scratches and waits for the Charlestown Classic, but if he does run, I don't like him. Okay. And then we have uh, the 11, Arthur's Ride, an 8-1 to one shot, uh, same as Skippy Longstocking. And take a look at this horse, John. Uh, his first four races, he went in the right direction, 18, 13, 12, and 9. Matter of fact, didn't race much. Those were four races between August of 22nd and March of 24th, but they were all headed in the right direction. Had a bad race where you could just draw a line through. That was just a bad one at Churchill. I'm not sure what happened there. And then the five. What happened there? The track was sloppy. That's what happened there. Okay. But it's, it was a bad race, but he rebounded and he ran a five last time out at Saratoga. And that was early June, too, so he's had long, more than enough time. Yeah, but he doesn't show up at the rate. The good news is he's making his fourth start of this year. You know, he's only had three starts over the last two years. I don't particularly like him. I think you have better options. Look, he got beat. He got beat in the maiden race by the ultra talented Instant Coffee. So, uh, always, always uh, been a fan of this horse. He was off for a long, long time. You know, obviously had some kind of an issue. But Bill Mott does a great job, and this is the uh, this is the final leg of the Bill Mott Revenge Tour with him getting beat with Cody's wish last year in the Whitney. I think he can make amends and, and win it this year with Arthur's ride. It's a big, it's a big step. It's a big ask, 
Um, but he's the horse to do it. And I think that was the whole point in running in that race last time was getting a race over the track here at Saratoga again. And this is where he's, he's based. He's been trained here since since the, the race at Churchill. Um, he loves this track. It's home for him. It's home for Bill Mott. And, and I think this horse is a must use. And, and if he can, if anyone's going to pull the upset, I think it's Arthur's right. Yeah, there's only one other horse in the field with two other horses, actually, with a five. That's post time and charge it. Charge is the last horse in the field, a 30 to one shot. That five happened uh, February of last year, so quite a while ago. Did run a six in July of last year. But since then, the last five races, he only has one single digit race. That was an eight in May. Correct. I don't like him. Well, I mean, look, at 31 is a little bit disrespectful for the connections and the horse involved. Um, I think he can run good enough in this race and then set up for a run in the Pacific Classic next time. All right, John, who do you like? I like first mission, the five exact is with the three national treasure, the four warrior Johnny. And I guess we'll throw in the 11. Chad's been watching the 11 work off his right. Author's uh, right. So five with three, four, 11. Okay, Chad. I'm going to take Arthur's ride on top, and I'll play on him top. with uh, with Jonathan Sue. I'll play him with First Mission, and I'll play him with National Treasure. But uh, I think, you know, I think he's a little bit of the forgotten horse. I think, you know, he's not going to drop much below that morning line, um, and I think he can work out a great, great trip. No First Missions for you, Chad? Yeah, First Mission, second. Oh, I thought you said National Treasure. First Mission, National Treasure, second and third. Oh, okay. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and take the <laughs> nine. So I'm going to go ahead and take uh, Bright Future. Um, and I'm also going to go with the 11 and the 8. So 9 over 11, 8. Uh, John, again, has the 5 over 3, 4, 11. Chad has 11 over 5, 3. And that is the Whitney. Chad? Look, I think it, if, if anybody comes out to Saratoga this weekend, make sure you stop off at Doc's Popcorn and get some popcorn because it's one of them days to get your popcorn ready for sure. Oh, what does that mean? <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Chad. Thanks for doing this. Yeah. I know how busy you are. Oh, he's gone. <laughs> you didn't have to. You didn't, you didn't need All other. The you get. You didn't even get <laughs> the other select. accolades. What's the next race we're doing? All right. Uh, let's uh, talk about. Well, we could do seven or ten. And again, what's we could do ten. Let's do ten. Uh, by the way, the seventh was the. Uh, what was that? Saratoga Derby. So yeah, the, the tenth, problem there is you have a Charles Appleby horse and an Aiden O'Brien horse shipping in in the seventh, and the, the two Euros, you know, they come from terrific barns, and I would just probably assume the winner's coming from one of those two horses. Yeah, Diego Velasquez is two to one. So. And legend of time is Charles Appleby. Yep. So. Seven to two. Yeah, so all right, let's uh, talk about let's talk about this uh, tenth race. So this is uh, the oh, by the way, that uh, I forgot to say goodbye to everybody on YouTube. So don't forget, in order to get this race, the tenth race at uh, Saratoga, uh, join us at Patreon. It's just five dollars a month. You got the link in the description. Uh, if you have subscribe, any subscribe, and subscribe, and yes, that's also very important. In case you have not subscribed yet, please do that. As soon as we get to a thousand subscribers. All of our race picks are going to be available for free here on YouTube.